So here's a tracing example that involves pointers with two stars. Int star star. And just like usual, the key here, in my mind at least, is draw a diagram. If we have a diagram and we trust it, it can probably do the work for us. Uh, so we'll start as usual. We'll make ourselves a nice scoping box for main. Now main is going to have a lot of variables this time, so I'm going to try and keep those organized. Um, so there's main. There it is. And then it's got a variable x. It's got a variable y. Uh, on line 10, it creates that. Down on line 15, it's going to need a variable called a. I'll just leave a blank space because it hasn't been created yet. So there's x. There's y. Um, let's see. There is uh, int star p. And there we go. OK, the initial value of x is 6. The initial value of y is 10. The initial value of int star p, of p is a pointer to int. The value of it is ampersand x, arrow pointing at x. And you can verify to yourself that the type of this is int star, because x is an int. So if I create an arrow pointing at it, that's an int star. And p is an int star, so I am allowed to do that assignment. So I give p an arrow pointing at x. OK, and then int star q equals ampersand y. So there's q. Um, and it's int star. And just like before, y is an int, so it's valid for me to write something like uh, q equals ampersand y. And that means it contains an arrow pointing at y. And then um, I'll put it over here. Line 13, int star star r. So r is a pointer to, a pointer to, an int. And I try to assign it arrow pointing at q. So q is an int star. It is a pointer to int. If I create an arrow pointing at q, I add a star to the type. So q is an int star, so an arrow to q would be int star star, which means I can store that in r. OK, so r contains this arrow pointing at q. And then line 15, I create a variable a, and I set its value to 0. All right, line 16, first line of output. I mean, if I'm going to do badly on the question, that's one thing, but I should be able to get the easy mark for the first line of output. So first line of output, a equals 0, x equals 6, and y equals 10. All right, line 18. And this really is, you can see, a tracing question with just one function call and not much else going on. Clearly, this is going to be a thing. So line 18, I can't do the assignment until I figured out what happens here. What's the return value of f? So I'm going to need a box for f. And there it is. And f contains, f is eventually going to need three variables. I'm going to make a box big enough to have all of them. For the time being, though, f only takes two arguments. And they're called a and b. Uh, and actually, maybe what I'll do is uh, change my mind a bit. There we go. Let's just resize that box. So there's A and there's B. And A and B are both of type pointer to, pointer to int. So int star star. All right, and so um, the first thing I'm passing in, my first argument, remember that when I'm passing arguments, I am still in the scope of wherever I'm calling the function. The first thing I pass in from main is arrow pointing at p. And we know that p is an int star. And that means that ampersand p, arrow pointing at p, will be an int star star. And that matches up. The first argument is supposed to be an int star star. So this arrow pointing at p gets assigned to my variable a. So now inside of f, um, you rewrite this. Inside of f, uh, we have this. a contains an arrow pointing at p. OK, and the second argument is the value of r. You'll notice this doesn't say ampersand r. It just says r. And when I use the name of a variable by itself, I'm saying, go look in that box. So what's in that box? Well. In the box called r in main, I've got an arrow pointing at q. And r is an int star star. So this value here in this box is an int star star. And that matches up. The value of r is the same type as the value that f wants for b. So this gets assigned to b. Uh, and so what b ends up containing is whatever is currently contained in r, which is an arrow pointing at q. So I end up with this. And we're only barely started. And we can see already the diagram is turning into spaghetti. OK, so I've passed in my arguments. I'm ready to begin executing the function. And the first thing I do on line number two is create an int called z. And there it is. And assign it the following value. 
Okay, star star A, what do I do with that? So the key when you see a star in an expression is to go right to left and read every star as follow an arrow. So Z equals, okay, start at A, follow an arrow, follow an arrow. So I start at A, I follow an arrow, and then I follow an arrow. So I get the number six, and then I that gets subbed in here. Z equals six. All right, next thing, star A equals star B. Now this is something where it's hard to sort of draw out what I mean by this. I, I have to wave my hands in the air in person. Um, so first, before I do the left-hand side of any assignment, I have to figure out what this is. So what is this? Star B. Well, star B says start at B and follow an arrow, and that takes me to this box here. What is in this box? Well, it's an arrow pointing at this thing here the variable whose name is y in main. Okay, so the right the right hand side of this assignment is arrow pointing at y in main. Because there's no real term I can use in the context of f. I can't write ampersand y because f doesn't know about what y means. Okay, so the right hand side of the assignment is an arrow pointing at the variable y in main. So what's the left hand side of the assignment? Star a. So what I want to do is figure out what star a is and then wherever I end up assign an arrow pointing at y in main. Okay, so what is star a? Start at a, follow an arrow, and that takes me here. So into this box, I want to put an arrow pointing at y in main. So I erase the current contents of this variable, and I instead put an arrow pointing at y in main. Okay, next line, line number four, star star a equals 100. So I'll just get rid of this. So I know that the right-hand side is just the number 100. That's not going to be the hard part. I take the value 100, and I assign it to wherever I end up if I start at A, follow an arrow, and then follow an arrow. So inside of F, this is A. I start at A, I follow an arrow, and then I follow an arrow, and that takes me here. Okay, so I set this to have the value 100. And then the function says return Z. So as usual, in the scope of F, the value of Z is 6. So my return value is 6, which means I go back down to main and I sub in the value 6 where I had the function call. And then the function F ends. All right, this is going to be fun. OK, so there's that. And then let's see what we can do about these arrows. I need to get a bigger eraser. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to erase all the little bits of arrow here. And you can tell diagrams like this get pretty messy. One recommendation, if you happen to be using paper for diagrams, this is actually sort of easy. What you can do is use pen to draw the boxes and pencil to draw the arrows. Then it's really easy just to erase the arrows. Okay, that's about the best I can do there. So I'm back on line number 18 in main. F is now gone. Its scope has been destroyed. And on line 18, it says A equals 6. Well, in main, this is A. So I set it to the value 6. Line 20 print out the values of a, x, and y. So line 20, a equals 6, x equals still 6, and y equals 100. Line 21, star p equals 1,000. So I take the value 1,000 and I assign it to wherever I end up if I start at p and follow one arrow. So I start at p, I follow an arrow, and now I set this to have the value 1,000. All right, line 22, I print out all three things again. A equals uh, 6, X still equals 6, and Y now has the value 1,000. And it's worth noticing that I both uh, extracted values from variables, I took the uh, value 6 out of the variable X, and I set Y to have two different values, even though after I initially create them, I never seem to use X and Y in the program. I, well, I guess I... I set the pointers. Uh, the function that modifies x and y doesn't know anything about the name x or the name y. It gets to those things only by following pointers. Another thing worth considering, sort of eerie issue here, is that when I call the function f, I hand it over ampersand p, which originally points to x, and r, which points to q. I don't even directly give it a pointer to y, and yet it is able to modify y by following arrows.